Hi, everybody, and welcome to my presentation. Thank you so much for coming here. So welcome, willkommen, Carlos Irtate, Mircevini, bienvenidos, bienvenu, e benvenuti, benvenuto. Um, so my presentation is called Unpopular Opinion. The most effective way to learn foreign languages might be to learn them simultaneously. Ο πιο αποφαλέ τρόπο να μάθει ξένε γλώσσε ίσω να είναι να τι μαθαίνει ταυτόχρονα. Μονίρα μου εφεκτήβε προ το μοσό αριού το Χουάιαν μπάσε ω τη μοσό νιοκοσίστ. Today's agenda includes an introduction, a look at what this topic is, what this presentation is about, a little bit about me and my background and my language learning journey, then we'll dive deep into the analysis of the topic. Uh, we'll have our conclusion, and then at the end, we'll take some questions from the audience. So introduction. How many of you have heard this before? How about you master this language first before you start, it, before you start learning a new one? I get that comment all the time. If you're, if you're a language fanatic like me, chances are you've also heard this before. You just can't help it, though. You're too excited to get started onto your new language, and I totally get it. So today we'll talk a little bit about that. My personal experience with learning languages simultaneously. How did I learn seven languages? What are some challenges I faced using this technique and how did I overcome them? How should one go about doing this successfully? Why and to whom would I recommend this method? And who should likely not adopt this approach? Please do keep in mind as we go through this, this is my personal opinion as somebody who has studied language, uh, and I would be more than happy to, you know, maybe in the comments hear a little bit about any of you. If you've actually read some research on this topic, I'd be interested to hear what the research have, has to say. But do keep in mind, this is a personal opinion, and I understand that there are both sides to the story. Maybe some people argue that this is a great idea, and some people might argue that uh, you should avoid it. So let's talk a little bit about that. A little bit about me first. I speak English, Greek, and Albanian fluently. Uh, Greek and Albanian are both my native tongues, and then English I speak fluently uh, because I've been studying it since I was in third grade. Um, I have a master's in business administration. My, my interests include languages, cultures, travels, history, business, marketing, law, and education. And the reason why I study languages is because I believe that foreign languages bring people together and they enable us to understand and appreciate our world in new ways. I, they just fascinate me. So my journey, and hopefully this will put into perspective what I have to argue. I learned Greek and Albanian at the same time as a child. So basically when I first started talking, I was bilingual. That's because I was born and raised in Greece uh, by Albanian parents who wanted to make sure that, you know, their lang language and culture was not lost in that country. Uh, so they taught us that. And something that I found was a huge advantage and maybe helped me um, further on to study the languages that I studied later on. So I would consider both of those to be my native tongues. And then English, like I said earlier, I started learning when I was in third grade. It was the curriculum in Greece that it was mandatory for you to take English. And then by the time that I was in fifth grade, we had to pick a second language. So I picked German. It was one of the options that my school offered. And I continued German all throughout high school. And then I studied it at the university level as well. And, that, and in high school, I also took on Spanish. So why I'm emphasizing is, is because I want, you, I want to point out the overlap that I'm, of constantly studying two languages at a time. But as you will see, starting one of them first and then taking on another one. I'll elaborate more on that later. Uh, after I graduated, I decided to take on Italian and French and I have been self-studying those myself. In the chart here, you can see how I would rate my proficiency in each level, in, uh, excuse me, how I would rate my level of each language. So 
what am I, what do I mean exactly by studying languages that simultaneously might be the best way? Well, I'm not, I don't mean it in the sense that you should constantly at the same time be studying two languages. There is some flexibility there. Like I said, in my journey, there is some overlap between starting English earlier on and then taking on German two years later, but while you're still studying English. So I think it's important to emphasize having a head start in one language to avoid any possible confusions. Uh, now, I think the best method to do this would be to learn languages at the same time could be by comparison. So having that head start in one language will allow you to compare and contrast the differences in grammar, vocabulary, vocabulary and phonetics. And that will make learning the other foreign language a lot easier, in my opinion, because now you already have another one that you can compare and contrast, excuse me, compare and contrast that language to. I think it helps if the languages you're learning are within the same family, uh, but caution there to not have languages that are too similar. For example, I think it would make sense to learn Italian and French at the same time because they belong in the same family and having a head start in Italian, for example, will give you that advantage of now you're studying French and you can refer back to Italian and compare and contrast rules. Oh, I already know that from Italian. That's great. Moving on kind of mentality. Uh, but now if you're studying Spanish and Italian at the same time, those are way too similar. And I think that's where there's a possibility of confusion. Uh, so I would avoid those that are too, too similar. Now, at the same time, I would say take on uh, the study of two languages if you're already an experienced language learner. So if you're somebody that you already know how to study language before you've done it before, you already know what methods work for you. You already know if you're a visual learner, uh, what, what kind of learner you are. You already know those things. So this would make sense for you to, at this point, make things quicker and faster uh, by taking on additional languages. If you're somebody, though, who only speaks one language, their native tongue, and right off the bat, they want to start taking on two additional ones, I don't think that would be ideal because, again, you're not familiar with how language learning works. Why am I saying this? So what's the point of me even making this presentation? Because I, I currently reside in the United States and I get the question all the time of, well, don't you get the languages confused? How can you be taking classes in both German and Spanish back when I was taking them at school? Or now, how can you be studying both Italian and French? I think the, the reasoning why I'm making this is because I want people to encourage them to uh, get past the fear of, no, I cannot, I cannot balance two languages at once. That's too hard. I think everybody can do it. And we need to get past that fear. Because by practicing and devoting time into both languages, all you have to do is just devote double the time because now you're studying two languages so that's double the free time you have to devote to learning languages right uh, so i think if you have that dedication if you put that time aside and through practice and repetition it's more than doable and so in in europe because again when i was in greece i noticed that in europe that european culture we kind of encourage kids from a young age to learn multiple languages at once. So again, my example of learning English and then taking on German, that, that is very common. The curriculum encourages it, encourages it. But here in the US, it's not as common. So I again, I want people to believe in their abilities more and get past that fear and realize that by dedicating that time, uh, by practicing and by repeating, they can ultimately achieve those goals. And again, by comparing and contrasting, uh, start with a language that's similar and then take on the other one. There are a ton of resources nowadays online that people can utilize to study language either at their own pace or online through live uh, lessons with professionals or to even chat with speakers of native speakers of uh, their target language. So I think nowadays it's more than doable. And one more reason why 
you should get over that fear of I cannot do it. Uh, you will notice that once you learn your first few languages, you're already excited to move on to, to the next one. Uh, and then if that next one happens to be hard, it might be discouraging you from moving on because now you're kind of stuck. Well, if you're balancing two at the same time, you can kind of use the other language kind of as a way of, as a relief, as a getaway from the language that's stressing you. So you focus on that, you're still not losing any time, you're still, you know, reaching a certain level at a new language, and then you can refer back to the other one once you've kind of distressed from that situation. So those mental tricks like that, the enthusiasm of, hey, look, now I can understand one more language in the same amount of time that I spend, that I would otherwise spend in one more in one language, now I'm studying too. So that enthusiasm, that can truly drive you to uh, pursue that can truly drive you to uh, multilingualism way quicker than you think. And I think it's a big deal. I think your mentality and how you approach, uh, how how badly you want something, I think that can drive you uh, to where you want to be fairly quickly and effectively. So that's what I mean by studying languages simultaneously. It can be overlapping. It can be that you've gotten a head start in one language for two years and then you take on the other one. Or if you're brave, sure, you can... If you're a brave language learner and you've already mastered three of them, sure, maybe start two completely brand new ones at the same time. Uh, definitely do keep in mind that everybody's abilities are, we're all more than able and capable to learn, but we all learn in unique ways. So please do keep in mind your unique ways and figure out how, what works, what works best for you. So, Maybe I'm repeating myself here, but I want to emphasize why am I uh, recommending this as a personal opinion? Because it's fast. One more time, the drive to being able to speak multiple languages at once. Uh, you're spending the same amount of time, but now you're, you can speak two more languages than what you previously had. And that's huge. That will motivate you. Um, and even if you're not fluent in or advanced in those two languages just yet, two or maybe three, that's another point, as many as you feel comfortable with, but I feel like three may be a stretch. Uh, so even if you're not fluent or advanced in those yet, you're still able to understand them. And that alone can also bring you joy and drive you to pursuing your goals even further. In addition, studying languages by the compare and contrast method, where you're kind of referring back to the languages that you already speak, again, to find those similarities in vocabulary, phonetics, uh, syntax, and grammar, and whatever. Um, by doing that, you're also getting a deeper understanding of the history and the linguistics behind each, behind both languages. So it's a much deeper approach than studying those separately. But again, here I understand that you can also argue the opposite, that by devoting more time into one language, you could dive deeper that way too, which is also true. Like I said, there are no right and wrong sides to uh, this argument, but I do feel like you know you could be missing out on certain points. Like there, there is a beauty to the comparative study of language as well, that because there are things there that you could be missing out on if you were to study each language separately. So the, those comparative rules um, are also very important. And then lastly, we've already touched on this, but the variety might be exciting for some people, right? Uh, you might be drained out and exhausted of you know studying Italian all day long and you might need a break. So you just uh, take on Portuguese and you kind of use that to relax. And when you're ready, you go back to Italian and now you're fresh and happy and ready, ready to uh, keep improving in that language. So it sounds all good, right? But I understand why people might not recommend this. And that's because for some, it might be confusing. Uh, you might you may get them mixed up. I understand that. And that's the reason why I said earlier, don't study languages that are way too similar, like Spanish and Italian, uh, but study languages that are 
similar enough. It might be frustrating in the beginning because, again, maybe this applies more to people who are not uh, familiar with how to study language over, overall, but because they might be struggling in the beginning, that frustration might discourage them to possibly keep going. Uh, and that's fine. If that's the case, again, do whatever is comfortable for you and maybe leave one language for at a, at a later time. Um, so do whatever works best for you. One more thing that I wanted to touch uh, to touch on earlier uh, kind of relates to this point, but uh, <laughs> somehow I missed it. I apologize. To avoid any confusions if you're studying two languages at the same time, uh, back on that designated time and place thing, what you could do is you could have different locations where you study each language to associate each language with each location. That might help with those who are more visual, with those learners who I'm one of them, who kind of think of it as if you're taking an exam and you can, you can picture the page in the book where the answer is. Well, if you're studying a language, you can kind of picture yourself sitting in that room and studying that language. So you're like, okay, that language is French because I've been studying it there with those people. So even small things like having a place or people or a context that you associate with each language might help you to not get them confused. Uh, for example, when I was at the university, we had one building for all languages um, and I had back to back German and Spanish. And then I had a one hour, 15 minute break in between. So I would go from German at the top floor and then to Spanish at the, at the first level. And in between, I would actually go to Italian, even though I wasn't officially taking a course. I there was a classroom that had all glass and like a student lounge area outside that you could sit on the seat and so I could just sit there and I could hear and uh, hear and see what the professor had in their slides so I was kind of taking notes by myself and I wouldn't count that as my official beginning of studying Italian because I, it wasn't enough like I could just hear things here and there, but that, that was exciting to me. So I had that association of, yeah, I'm taking them back to back. So German and then break unofficial Italian and then Spanish, but I had that association of, this is where I learned German. This is where we only speak German. And then your brain kind of like you go downstairs, it kind of automatically clicks and it's like, oh, Spanish mode kind of thing. So that's a long example, a long way of saying, associations and different mind tricks like that can go a further way than you might think. So I apologize for that le lengthy example, but uh, whatever works for you, whatever associations, whatever mind tricks you can play uh, to make it less confusing and to avoid this uh, fear that everybody has that, oh, it's confusing and you're gonna get them mixed up. It It's not as hard as you may think. Um, as we approach the end of the presentation, I think ultimately I cannot emphasize enough that I only recommend this for, well, I shouldn't say only, I mostly recommend this for experienced language learners, those who are already familiar with how to study language. Please, if you only speak English or if you only speak Russian, do not just dive in. Hey, I want to learn four languages. Let me start by learning. I've never studied language before. Let me start by taking two at the same time. I, that would not be ideal. That's again for people who already probably speak like three already. Uh, the road, the road to multilingualism is closer for you than you might think. Uh, so, in conclusion, it gets easier, right? Uh, it, the hardest part is learning your first few languages and laying a solid foundation. And then after that, learning new languages becomes easier. And that's when you might consider learning more at the same time and possibly of the same family simultaneously by comparing and contrasting similarities and differences. Um, but do keep in mind, we all have unique learning styles and that's beautiful. This might 
this approach might not work for everybody and that's okay. Uh, use whatever works best for you, but do keep in mind that you can do more than you think and becoming a multilingual is not that hard uh, if you if you figure out what works what works best for you and then don't be afraid to study multiple at the same time, right? Um, that you know that will save up save you so much time and uh, before you realize it you're already speaking like five and uh that's that's amazing so that that's the whole reason for me making this presentation is again to tell to everybody who is thinking this because i get this a lot oh it's confusing to study languages at the same time it could take you so much time to sm to master like 10 of them well you can do it. Start by learning one or two and then just double up on the work. You can do it. So yeah, build a solid foundation and you're good to go. Uh, thank you so much. Now we'll move on to some questions. I think there are there are some here on the screen. Uh, Susanna says, how do you deal with the false friends during your process of learning multiple languages? Do you have any special method that helps make a difference a bit easier? Um, so I'm not, I apologize. I don't think I'm understanding this. If you, if you don't mind typing there, what do you mean by false friends? Do you mean like people that don't support you? If you don't mind clarifying that for me, that'd be great. Uh, so I will start answering the second part of your question first while you type that, if you don't mind. Uh, do you have any special methods that help make a difference a bit easier? Yeah, so the biggest one for me is having that distinction and that association of every language in a different spot, in a different location, at a different time with different people. Uh, I'm a very visual learner and I will refer back to my example of I, at school I was always the person who remembered who could picture in her head where the answer was in the book and that's how I could get the test questions right so for me it really helps to say okay on the weekends I'm only studying French and I do that at home and then Tuesday and Wednesday when I have time I only study Italian and I actually go to the library so Sometimes if I'm kind of struggling, okay, does this rule apply to French or Italian? Or is this word French or Italian? I know it sounds silly, but I kind of think, okay, where did I learn this? When was when I was studying this, where was I? Was in the library or was I at home? I know it sounds very silly, but that's how um, little tricks like that can actually be more helpful than you think. So I actually think, okay, I learned this when I was at the library. So that's French. Whatever, you know, so like even, even small things, whatever works best for you, that's one of them. Another one could be to maybe, uh, you know, definitely use the online resources, definitely watch movies online, listen to songs. There are a ton of language learning platforms out there uh, that you can dedicate to different time of the day to learn each language, but definitely use the online resources there too to help you uh, make the difference easier. Um, let's see. Oh, okay, Susanna, thank you. I see you clarified that question. So how do you organize your time days in order to learn easier, more challenging languages? Languages from the same different language families in order not to get confused. Okay, so I do believe I answered that then. Thank you again for clarifying it. Yeah, so uh, I could do on the weekends because my work schedule right now, that's what it allows. So I could do on the weekends only, uh, but it, however long works for you. But I typically do three hours. I would say that's my average is about three hours on Saturday and three hours on Sunday. If that's a lot for you, that's fine. Even a little bit works. I've heard people who were successful only using like 30 minutes a day, right? Whatever you can fit in your schedule is better than nothing. But I personally do on the weekends are more free. So I do three hours and three hours on French. And then on the weekdays, I do less. I do Tuesdays and Wednesdays about an hour and a half in Italian each day. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that. Let's see. The next question. I haven't met many polyglots who go to the target language countries and just take crash courses there. For me, it works perfect. Any reason? 
Um, I'm glad that works perfect for you. And thank you for being the example of what I was emphasizing earlier, that people have different learning methods. So what works best for you might not work for other people. Um, so any reason why that might work? You know, I'm not quite sure, but I am. I feel like it's unfortunate that more people don't do that. I think that's a good idea. I, and, you know, if you go to a target to a country uh, that speaks the target language that you're trying to learn, that's the best thing you could possibly do because you're immersed in that culture and that language speaking world and you're forced to use it. You're forced to if the people there don't speak English, you're forced to communicate in that language. You can't revert back to English yet, like you would in a classroom here. Like, oh, I'm speaking Spanish, but I'm sorry, I forgot how to say that in Spanish. So I will just revert back to English. No, there you will be forced to use it and you will uh, use context uh, to describe, even if you don't know a specific word, you will paraphrase it and you will describe the word with the words that you do know. So, I'm not quite sure why, you know, it works for some people and it doesn't for some others, but I think it'd be a great research topic. Uh, but I do want to emphasize that, yes, that's a great technique. So thank you for bringing that up. Oh, it looks like that's it for now. And I appreciate you. I saw somebody clarified that uh, false friends that I had a question with. So I appreciate you doing that. Turns out there are words that are, look similar between languages, but have different meanings. Uh, for example, gift in English is something nice that you give someone for a birthday or holiday and gift in German is poison. Oh yeah, that's very true. Thank you, Dorota, for clarifying that. So I, yeah, I did not know that. So thank you. That that's wonderful. Uh, since there are no more questions at this time, though, I want to thank everybody for watching and for, you know, helping me here with your comments. That was very nice. Uh, but that's, let's see, that's everything I had. So thank you again. Gracias. Grazie. Merci. Bye.